Hello my fellow gardening gals and guys. Welcome back to my channel, Serenity Now Garden. My name is Jamie and I garden in the zone 4B. So today I really wanted to share a new purchase with you. I've really been into coneflowers lately. Um, they just really pop in the garden and I'm really trying to add more. Um, as you probably saw in a video last week, I added some powwow wild berry. And this week at Gertens, which is just a, um, a garden center not too far from where I live here in central Minnesota, um, I was able to find these coneflowers. These are really unique looking. Um, I'll give you a close up here and I'll show you a picture also of what they look like fully grown. Um, but these are called double scoop. This one's raspberry um, coneflower. So the double scoop if you could see here like this the seed head is actually like a flower and then these petals will come out on the side um, so this one is still forming here um, but that will mound up um, all of these will do that and I just thought that was so unique um, I really wanted to get some for my garden I'm just gonna start with one but I hope to add more um, coneflowers are just amazing plants. They bloom July through September. They're good in zones like four through nine. They take full sun to part shade. Um, once they're established the first year, they could take, they're pretty drought resistant and they could really take the sun. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you a couple of coneflowers I have up front also in my bed and I'll kind of show you where I'm gonna plant this as well. So I'll insert that clip here. Okay guys, so this is my front bed here. I am gonna zoom in so you can see closer, but I just want you to see a big picture of where my coneflowers are. So here's one right here. As you can see, they're almost waist high. They're on our th their third season here. There's another one here and another one right next to it. So there's three total of the Magnus Old Fashioned Coneflowers. And there's also one I just planted right here that's a powwow wild berry. I'll show you a bit closer in a moment. So here's the two on the right. Now these are both Magnus. Now you could see the one on the right is a vibrant pink, um, kind of pinkish purple. And the one on the left um, is kind of like a pale white. So I'll zoom into both. So yeah, it's just a vibrant color. Um, and then this one has a bit of sun scorch, it looks like too, on some of the um, petals. So I think it gets a little more sun than the other one because there is a crab apple that's kind of in front of it. And we did have a 100 degree temperature day. So can you look at that there? there it's just kind of like a bleached white color. And yeah, it just looks like some sun scorch right there. So interesting, the plants are so close together. It has been dry. Here's the other one. Very windy today. It's been super windy here in central Minnesota. So this one looks okay. And then this one is the Pow Wow Wild Berry. And as you can see, there's actually a bumblebee on it. Um, coneflowers attract pollinators so much, guys. They are just um, great flowers to attract the pollinators. I highly recommend them. Um, but as you can see, something, possibly a rabbit, ate half the petals off of this coneflower. So this is what I do for that. I use this liquid fence. I buy this jug for about 20 bucks at uh, Home Depot and just give it a good spray. It just smells bad, basically. It's got some egg whites and um, some other oils in it that are pungent. Um, now, as you can see, up in my front bed, there were coneflowers next to each other. One was more of like a pale white and had some sun scorch to it. Um, I'm not really sure exactly what's going on there. There are a few problems that coneflowers can get that I'll talk about here and I'll kind of insert some pictures just so you know. Um, so what I believe is going on with the one up front is just it was just in a drier area. Um, even though it's right next to the uh, other coneflower that is it's like a brighter pink. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to water that area really good. I might give it just a, like a liquid fertilizer just to see if it perks up. Um, I think that's the issue, but you know, it's kind of too soon to tell. 
I don't believe it's aster yellows. Now, aster yellows is a disease that coneflowers can get, um, but the plant would be stunted, it would be smaller, and also the petals will be, would be malformed. I'll insert a picture here of what aster yellows looks like on coneflowers. Um, so what you want to watch out for with aster yellows is, um, like I said, the stunted growth, the malformed flowers. The aster yellows um, disease is actually from a bacteria that's spread by a leafhopper insect, um, and it can infect all your plants easily. It could, um, not all of, not all of your plants, but all of your coneflowers, and there's also like 300 species that the asters yellow infects. So we're talking coneflowers, asters of course, moms, um, petunias, zinnias, and there might be a couple more snapdragons for sure. Um, and if there's a couple more, I'll kind of put them on the screen. So anyways, what you're going to want to do if you do find out that it's aster yellows is you want to rip the plant out and you don't want to compost it because you don't want it to spread anywhere else. You just want to throw it out. Um, and it's just uh, really important just to take care of it right in the beginning. So I'm also going to take you in back and show you where I'm going to plant this. Now, like I said, I've just really decided to add a lot more coneflowers. It's, it's a really good flower that starts to bloom like just after the late spring and early summer um, plants have bloomed. There's kind of like a lull in my blooming cycle and these plants really stand out. They're one of the first to bloom for the summer. Um, so I'll take you in back, show you where I'm going to put this, where I'm going to add more as well. Okay, here we go guys. Um, I decided to put it in this back bed here. Um, there's as you can see, there's not that much color. It's mostly fo foliage, but there is some angelonia that's just an annual that I'm planting like right in front of. Now that won't be there next year. So I'm just going to move this ajuga out of the way. Um, I'm going to transplant it somewhere else. It's like a burgundy glow ajuga. And yeah, I think that's a perfect spot for that cone flower. Um, I'm really lacking some summer blooms in this area. A lot of this stuff blooms in the spring. And just in between those two hostas. Um, so, like I said, I'm going to transplant this ajuga somewhere else. I love ajuga ground cover. And in my bucket there, I have compost, black dirt, and some slow-release organic fertilizer. Just a 444 mixture. It's called chicken poo. Um, I put the native soil in there and I kind of shake out the roots and I mix it up really well. I always amend my soil like this because I have tons of sand. All right, so I'm just putting it in there at the same level, dumping all the amended soil in, and I'm going to give this a really good water and I'll probably also spray it with the liquid fence um, just in case. I don't want anything happening to, happening to it back here. Like I said, there's a ton of deer. So isn't that gorgeous, guys? I mean, this is such a unique looking coneflower. And for the long bloom, I mean, it is worth it. Um, I'm going to get a few more. In fact, I'm going to, I actually, shortly before editing this video, I went and bought another coneflower. I'm going to insert a clip um, to show you because it's another raspberry. It's not a double scoop. Um, but here, as you can see, this is a kismet um variety raspberry coneflower and i just love it so i hope you like that video guys um hope you enjoy co coneflowers as much as i do and yeah please leave a comment if you have any questions or share any varieties that you really like i would love to keep planting coneflowers and i'll just keep sharing so happy gardening guys take care